Hello, OWASP AppSec Global visitor slash uh, channel viewer. I'm Timur. Uh, this is my three minutes or so uh, prelude uh, to our joint talk with Peter, who is the major speaker here and the uh, major mind behind the program we suggest. The topic of our discussion is the many times missing organizational, let's say, glue needed to make uh, the elements of application security uh, more solid set up together. The glue, which is also required uh, to reproduce and evolve application security in that better form that we suggest. In the common terms, we tackle the topic of uh, maturity, quality assurance, and also champions. When I'm recording this, we are already done uh, with our discussions with Peter. Let me prelude it uh, with main points. Uh, the slides are difficult. Uh, I expect you to return to these slides later or uh, contact us uh, via the feedback form, uh, which is linked as a QR code on the last slide. So we approach uh, software production teams and departments as an organism. We assume that organizational structures and routines surrounding application security are weak. Of course, there are exceptions and best practices, so don't get offended. The question opening this approach is why should security skills, routines and quality assurance be treated on the organizational level differently, not like uh, we otherwise do in software production. There is a new OWASP um, thingy called integration standard that's a NOAA's project uh, check it out it intermingles the arsenal of application security into one structured and an actionable map and it this map it also shows the place of our topic it calls its uh, culture building and process maturing what is missing there is the approach of organizational development. Note that as it is now, it expects an engineerish approach uh, to the field that we are talking about. While we suggest to look at the field uh, of culture and maturity as an issue of uh, structured collective behavior which is to reproduce and improve based on internal mindset and dispositions. So the solution in our opinion is to nurture this field using organizational development instruments. We can already translate this uh, into, into an, an actionable organizational development slash SSDLC program, though the details are not a subject of this presentation. Also, please uh, uh, be patient uh, with the glitches uh, during the uh, following discussion. This was uh, our first try to introduce the program. So now we are uh, together with uh, Peter Nilashi, who is the major figure uh, behind this uh, idea, program, concept, model, whatever, or, yeah. whatever, yeah. Hi, uh, <laughs> Hi. So in my introduction, I tried to explain uh, what is the map on which we are uh, trying to find uh, the missing uh, glue of organizational uh, measures, uh, uh, which are uh, which are to uh, enable all these components which are 
originally like engineer to engineer uh, designed but lacking this organizational uh, glue again uh, which is uh, essentially our uh, proposal today to add this glue to the organizational uh, treatment of security and um, it's important to mention that uh, many other organizations uh, may have uh, this glue already and it, it uh, could have uh, uh, been created uh, organically or naturally and uh, the, uh, the, the point of our uh, uh, talk today and, and the program that we uh, propose is how to implement it uh, methodologically so how a, a software development workshop uh, like a team or a big organization uh, could uh, take uh, or advise and implement uh, those missing organizational glue thingies uh, but first of all let us explain uh, why this organizational aspect is important at all why all those uh, engineering uh, made uh, when engineers uh, created made uh, components of application security why they doesn't work mm -hmm. or yeah. what is missing uh, uh, for uh, the educational uh, process of mm -hmm. uh, security or let's say for uh, security assurance uh, within mm -hmm. the software development process yeah yeah so it's took me some time to, to realize that, uh, that security, quality, is something that depends more on the organization structure, more on the roles of the organization structure, on the rules of the organization, on the processes that the organization have, on the uh, scripts that the organization have. So security quality depends more on all these things than many other aspects of software quality. Okay. Uh, how your uh, organization is structured, how it is organized, it doesn't matter, well, it does matter, of course, in every, every, every aspect of uh, software development, but actually it matters less in many other fields of software development than in security, okay? Now, now, now why is it so? Uh, so, I, so I believe that uh, there are probably three important reasons, okay? Uh, the first reason is that security is a typical weakest link problem. The weakest developer you have, security-wise, it will determine the overall security quality of your software simply. Okay, if you just have one junior developer who never heard about SQL injection, then you have a great chance that uh, this uh, developer will introduce a SQL injection vulnerability into your software. Unless, so of actually course... actually the developer is the uh, weakest link of, uh, yes. of security flow. Yes, 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 de 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 definitely. Unless, of course, you have... Or can be. Can be, can be, can be. Unless you have a really good uh, organizational structure which prevents this developer somehow, which which, uh, you know, uh, draws the right lines and uh, uh, prevents this developer to introduce it by, you know, uh, mandating uh, code review or uh, by uh, mandating uh, uh, the usage of automatic uh, tools and the interpretation of those tools and so on and so on. And so, on. so there must be like a structure uh, uh, and uh, a set of uh, regularities that work uh, yes. on the on the gut level and on the conscious level, yes. which uh, I prevent uh, yes. uh, uh, the weakest link, the developer, uh, from being uh, uh, a root cause of uh, a security problem, yes. right? Yes, 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 yeah, definitely. So that's the that's, that's the first thing. The weakest link, uh, the weakest link problem is is one reason why uh, we have to deal with security on the organizational level. The other, the, the second thing is is how knowledge spreads. Okay, uh, in uh, in technology and in IT, we got used to the fact that that several types of IT knowledge spread very very efficiently. Okay, if if uh, uh, if uh, I write a software component which I don't know solves some complicated task. Then all the other developers can just take the, that component and incorporate it into their software code, and they can use it without, you know, uh, without knowing deeply the component. 
they can just just use it very efficiently okay that's that, that, that that's quite similar to to how technology works you know someone uh, created uh, this phone or this notebook but I who use this notebook I don't have to understand how it works you know internally and don't have to understand all the all the uh, internals of, of my notebook I shouldn't I'm, I certainly wouldn't be able to uh, create this notebook actually it wasn't made by one person it was made by a married person and uh, probably none of them fully understands how it works so in software development terms, you know the interface uh, to yes. it and it can be a black yes. box there. Yes, 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 definitely. Which, which also, if you see it from another perspective, it means that, that somehow the fruits of knowledge spread very fast and efficiently. Okay, Someone uh, understands a problem and creates a solution for it and suddenly everyone else can just use that solution. Okay, But in security, it doesn't work it, that way because because it doesn't really matter even if you if you have a lot of security knowledge know all kind of vulnerabilities know all kind of uh, architecture uh, security pitfalls it won't help the other developer to to avoid the same pitfalls okay it just doesn't it just doesn't spread easily uh, you spend i don't know years to 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 or months to understand uh, all the security aspects of your of your job and still the other developer doesn't instantly benefit from your knowledge, okay? Yeah, th these are uh, two aspects uh, uh, together in this explanation because on mm -hmm. one, uh, one is that uh, everyone can introduce a serious security problem mm -hmm. yes, which, sure. will, which may not be uh, encountered mm -hmm. uh, sure. in the worst case scenario and uh, the other is this dissemination of the no of, mm -hmm. of, of knowledge. Yes. So uh, is it that the knowledge should be equal because it shouldn't be? So the knowledge should be structured. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. It's 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 uh, unrealistic to to expect every developer to know every everything about security. But at least everyone should know the basics that he or she has to know in in uh, in his um, uh, field. Okay. And also, we should have rules which ensure uh, security quality further. Okay, for example, rules about code reviewing. Okay. Yeah. So we are talking about kind of uh, uh, security controls uh, on the on the process on the organizational level. Yes. Yes, definitely. And there is a third third reason why. Uh, we have to treat security on the organizational level, and that's that uh, security is a typical attention problem. Okay, uh, even if you know a lot about security, when you write your code or when you design your application, or even when you test your application, most likely you will focus on the functionality. Okay, and not on the security aspect of of, of what it, it it even happens with with security experts that they write a code and they introduce a vulnerability and they kind of have to you know shift their attention and check that code once again now with a you know security expert hat on them to realize that they just introduced a security vulnerability so the problem is that normally when you write the code or when you when you design uh, the application you focus so much on functionality that you totally forget about security. And again, or rather, you outsource or delegate uh, this uh, part of attention to specialized people. Yeah, like right? to pen testers or whatever. Yeah, I think it's it's another problem when you trust too much uh, uh, that uh, you know pen testers will later fix everything. Uh, yes. So 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 again, some organizational roles can help here. Because if you know there is a process which says that uh, um, in this and this and this part of the development process you have to uh, care about security. If there are some roles which mandate, then I don't know, in every group and in every meeting there is someone who is responsible for security. Then, then it helps uh, uh, helps people to 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 do this attention shift. Yeah, actually, the original idea uh, of Microsoft. Uh, uh, when they invented this uh, security champion uh, notion or role, it was that someone has to represent uh, security at every meeting, like... Uh, 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 yes, exactly. Uh, 
like a special uh, actor at the at the uh, the Greek drama. Uh, and yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly because of the of the attention she draws. Okay. So I think these are these are these are three important things to 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 remember and and you have to understand it because when you understand it you understand that security is not just an individual uh, problem it's not just about uh, teaching developers it's also also about changing some things on the organizational level. The question is then after we introduced it uh, uh, that that it's important to have this organizational uh, aspect uh, the glue uh, what are the measures or mm -hmm. what uh, what is the content of uh, uh, the program that uh, we propose or you propose yes 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 so, so let's first define the goals or trying to define the goals it's uh, it's important what are the main goals of of uh, of uh, that we want to achieve by you know uh, doing something on the organization level so so i collected five of those those goals and the first goal is no code gets into production without some security review. Okay, that's 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 very important because that's you know that's just the weakest link. That just uh, follows from the weakest link problem. If uh, some developers' codes get into production without anybody reviewing it, then there is a hard chance that uh, you will introduce a security vulnerability into your project. Okay, doesn't automated checking uh, help it? Well, that, yes, it can help. It can help. I don't believe that it solves all the problems, but yes, it can help, of, of course. But that's also part of the, you know, the organizational, organizational process. So yes, I believe that you have to do automated uh, checkings and you also have to do a code review by another person. But now you're advocating for uh, everyday uh, uh, code review yes. uh, and yeah, everyday uh, security related code yes review, right? definitely definitely that's the, yeah yeah I wanted to to focus it, uh, or emphasize it in the last part but yes that's how how this goal can be achieved I believe with uh, with uh, routinely done code review and yeah. of, of code could this uh, overhead be a reason yes I believe yes yes so yes. if I was a product manager what how could you uh, convince me that uh, 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 precious development time should be like uh, yeah I believe uh, that most 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 of wasted for it yeah but I, I believe that most software development companies start to understand that code review is necessary anyway not just for the security of the application but also for the overall quality of the of the of the code and the overall quality of the code is it, it's, it's always worse you know to 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 uh, to put some effort into it it all, always comes back it seems like it's a it's a waste of time, but it isn't. In the beginning, it looks like that, but after you know um, a year of development, there is a huge difference between good quality code and bad. Probably, I would say that there are churches. Uh, like uh, one church believes in the code review, and the other doesn't. So you are preaching in the church yes. uh, of, least, uh, of security of code review believers. At least everyone believes today in in code quality. Uh, everyone knows that it's it's important. It's it's a it's a knowledge that is that is a, um, it's, a it's, it's a major knowledge. Everyone knows it. it However, we rarely uh, met uh, good quality code, right? Well, it depends on how you measure, but yeah, uh, yeah, I believe it's. Uh, okay, so one one of the major uh, measures that uh, is part of this uh, method, or or set of methods is uh, security code review on daily basis mm -hmm. right yes definitely so what others we yes. propose maybe we can we can um, we can list the goals first okay if you don't mind um, so the first first goal was no code gets into production without someone reviewing it the second is security should be part of the design the implementation the testing and the follow-up okay well, that's that sounds trivial but it's important to to emphasize it that it yeah, should be part of every like part of development be preach forever so yes sure what's the difference no difference it's just it's just important to to make it sure that that's our goal okay we are finding the right ways uh, okay. for uh, uh, we, we are we are trying to understand how to and what to change in the organization level to achieve this goal okay 
that, that, that security is part of every phase of the software development. It's not just in the testing phase, it's not just in the implementation phase, it's also in the design phase and also you, uh, it is also there during the follow-up uh, period when the software is already in production and the uh, customer is just using it, okay? So it should be, should be everywhere, it should be ubiquitous. The third goal is that every developer should understand at least the basics of security that he or she needs during his or her work, okay? We should somehow ensure it again on the on the uh, on the organizational level that every de dev gets the right uh, kind of education, the minimal education that he or she needs. Okay, we have two more goals. There are some people who maintain and understand auto automatic tools. Okay, because automatic tools are great, but if nobody interprets them, they are they they are of no use, obviously. Okay, if you just run your uh, code checking and your code checking gives you lots of uh, problems but you don't react to it doesn't doesn't help you need some people who understand and able to interpret it knows which are the false positives which are the true positives which uh, ones have to handle by I don't know upgrading one of your components which one have to uh, um, handled by uh, by doing some workaround and so on and so on then the fourth one and the fifth one is uh, fifth one. yes this is the fifth and the last one and our last goal is that uh, there should be some security experts within the organization who understand architecture and advanced topics. Okay, so I'm not saying that everyone has to has to be a security expert. That's that that's important. That while I believe that everyone should have some basic knowledge of security, I don't think everyone has to be a security expert. But there should be some security experts within within the organization. Okay, who can help the others when they have a, when they have a question, and who can who can decide in architectural uh, situations? And we call those security champions. Yes, we call, we, we 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 actually uh, I actually believe that we sh that they should have a, a separate uh, uh, security champion role. Okay, they should be the security champion architects or the security uh, or the reviewer champion. So let's finish uh, with the explanation of the solution, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Or at least some 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 suggestions some hints, or yeah. proposals, yeah, or hints for for a possible solution. Actually, Peter has a medium uh, article uh, dedicated to this uh, problem, and it will be included. Uh, and you can follow the 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 link which we provide in the feedback form and uh, there will be a link uh, to this content yes so obviously one one um, part of uh, of uh, security still has to be education education is very important you have to if you have a company you have to educate your your developers so that they can learn uh, how to produce better more secure code okay and the thing is that you have to do it regularly and you have to do it as early as you can Whenever a new developer enters your company, you should do it as early as you can, obviously, because until uh, the developer <coughs> learns about the most important security things, there is a chance that uh, that uh, he is writing uh, you know vulnerable code. Also, one other important thing is that that. Uh, uh, related to education is that you have to understand what is it, what is the, what is the basic thing that every developer should know. Okay, you have to differentiate between between basic uh, security knowledge and more advanced uh, security knowledge. I had this experience that um, in many um, you know soft uh, security courses um, we actually teach all kind of things, uh, basic things and major things together. That's what we also do. Because that's what uh, that's what uh, that's what people want. That's what that's what they need, and that's okay. You can do it in in one course. You can you can teach it in one class. But still, you know, it should be separated. It should be differentiated. Uh, everyone should know that. Okay, these are the most important things that every junior developer has to know, and these are more advanced things that not everybody has to know. These are more like architectural stuffs. Okay. Uh, these 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 two kind of uh, knowledge should be should be separated well. I think it's it's important too. 
something which which you know deep which is deep related to education is is the problem of documentation okay and it's very difficult to have good documentation everybody knows that uh, you have documentation uh, fine but if nobody reads the documentation it is of no no use obviously so what you need in in, in security is some kind of develop documentation that is um, simple enough to search you know so that the developer can use it during his or her work okay on a daily basis like oh i wrote this software i wrote this piece of code okay now i know that i have to do a security check um, okay so what are exactly the checks that i have to do let's check the documentation and then the developer should be able to search the documentation based on on what what she did today she sh should get a kind of a checklist that okay then i have to check this 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 and this uh, from a security perspective okay i'm not saying that it's easy to create such a documentation uh, but it, uh, it 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 is essential if you want want the good security knowledge one good framework is uh, is skf uh, the security knowledge framework which is actually a software and which helps a lot in 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 this uh, this task that's uh, that's uh, one of the main goal of SKF. Yeah, big hello can... to our friends. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. SKF. We are probably a little bit biased towards SKF, but uh, we really believe that it's a good uh, good software which can be used exactly for this purpose. But whatever whatever works for you, use that. Have some good documentation. Some documentation that. Is not, yeah, no, I think you know, that the in the cupboard forever, but it's used really by them. Yeah, and they're, they're emphasizing in, in, on the good documentation or, or well implemented uh, documentation because uh, there are like absolute uh, believers in that uh, documentation doesn't work in software development and people never. Yes. Uh, check uh, documentation they uh, go to uh, stack overflow or wherever but they don't check uh, yes. documentation so skf is important in that it tries to be like an embedded uh, knowledge yeah. Uh, and yeah the emphasizing the on the on the actionable knowledge right yes 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 we call it documentation but it's more like more like policy of of on, on how to write uh, secure software okay not to go the wrong way yes 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 De definitely then of course one very important thing is code review we are already we already talked about it uh, in the previous section but yeah just let's just repeat it once more you have to do code review you have to do it regularly and you have to do a code review from a security point of view okay so that means that uh, that uh, every every code that goes into production have to be checked at least by another person okay and who this other person should be let's see it in the next next uh, um, slide sure or maybe uh, right after the next so the next is is, is about security champions I believe or we, we believe that security champions are it, it, it's a good system and we believe that actually it can be somewhat made somewhat more subtle uh, to achieve those specific goals that that we enlisted in the previous uh, sections so we suggested actually four different security champion roles let's see what these are the first is the reviewer champion or we can call it the architect champion um, uh, the names are you know flexible uh, the, the, the reviewer champion is the one who knows a lot about security uh, understands uh, understands uh, uh, security problems deeply uh, we call it we call him or her the reviewer champion because he's the one who should be called if there is any doubt during the security uh, during the code review okay so one developer writes a code, another reviews it, and the other is is, is a bit unsure whether this is which is this is secure, this is this is uh, vulnerable or not. He might not know it perfectly. Uh, in this case, they should call the security reviewer champion, who should have the the right knowledge to you know uh, uh, make a positive. Yeah, uh, sure so statement. it's like uh, probably like the first line support. Uh, for uh, security uh, issues is the code review and the second line is the uh, yes. that kind of uh, security yes. champion. 
Yes, yes, yes. Also, the role of this, the the reviewer champion can be can can also be educating uh, uh, new developers. Okay, it can be done by by uh, you know specific teachers, but it probably it can also be done by by the reviewer champion, uh, the the education. Also, the reviewer champion should uh, or the reviewer champions should be. Um, responsible for the documentation, okay? Because they know security best, so they should write the documentation or the policies uh, in SKF or in whatever uh, form uh, they do. So, so they have a lot of responsibility. They have a lot of stuff to do, and they should uh, have a, a major knowledge of security. Then we have this design champion, okay? The design champion is someone who is responsible for security in the design phase. The design champion surprisingly doesn't necessarily have to be as competent in security as the reviewer champion because the the role of the design champion is more a formal role like in the original uh, concept of um, of the security champion um, concept it's it's just that you know during the design phase the security the the design champion should always uh, bring security into the focus like Okay, so we design it this way. Is it going to be safe? Is it going to be secure? Have we thought about uh, security? Okay, so we are going to, I don't know, uh, let some source code from the user because it sounds fun and then we will just, you know, run it in the system. But is it safe? Is it safe? Can we do it safely? And then it's not the, the role of the design champion to answer the question, but I think at least should, it, he should bring it uh, to the table, you know, and then others will say, will say, okay, we'll somehow do it safely, or no, there's no way to do it safely, or whatever. And the third role is the DevOps champion, okay? So we, we believe that, uh, that we need a different role for, for the DevOps champion. The DevOps champion is basically the guy who uh, checks the results, of the automated um, uh, dependency checking tools, okay? So you should definitely do automated dependency checking because if you don't, you will certainly uh, produce vulnerable software. But the thing is that even if you do these uh, automated checkings, you need somebody who interprets the results of these uh, checkings. And that's not a trivial thing. You need someone who really understands uh, uh, how to interpret it and what to, what to do, what to intervene. And that's the most important uh, role of the, of the DevOps champion, but also, you know, he, he, he or she has some related tasks like, like uh, where to store secrets, how to how to handle them well, how, how not to store secrets in the uh, revision control system, and so on and so on. And finally, the, the fourth role is uh, the test champion, who is responsible for uh, security during the testing, which means that I, I believe that software should be tested from a security point of view during the testing. It doesn't really mean penetration testing. It means just a normal, um, you know, uh, sober uh, common sense uh, testing like okay this uh, URL should not be uh, reachable without an, an authentication is it unreachable without any authentication it's not really it's, it's not difficult a normal normal tester can test it okay but most of the times testers don't uh, don't uh, do such tests it is the penetration testers who do such tests and then realize that oops this URL can be actually accessed without uh, without any authentication or without the right authorization. But this is something that could be and should be do, should be done uh, during the test, uh, during the normal uh, functionality test uh, of the application. Okay, and these are four different roles, which doesn't mean that uh, they have to be different persons. It is possible that one person has two, three, or even four roles. But most of the time, especially in a big company, I believe it's better if these are dif different persons. And of course, uh, you have you don't have just one reviewer champion and one design champion, but you have you have many probably one in every project. Or uh, yeah, probably that's the that's the best way. Yeah, and we forgot to mention that. Uh... We are talking about uh, implement, implementing uh, things within a team, within a project, 
because teams and project they have this uh, special uh, tooling they maybe use different language from the other uh, project maybe a different framework so there are specific things about uh, the implementation of uh, organizational glue into the team and uh, and other glues like on the on the whole uh, uh, organization uh, or software development department probably is the organization that we call organization here um, level uh, so uh, probably for uh, today it's enough uh, uh, of introdu introducing uh, uh, the concept and the, the program and uh, of course there are more details so it was only just uh, scratching the surface yes right? because uh, the devil in the in the detail so we encourage uh, you uh, to uh, follow the link in the in the uh, feedback form and uh, now we close our presentation with uh, uh, the feedback slide. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Peter, for uh, thank you, thank you, Timur, and thank you, uh, thank you for, and thank you everybody for watching this. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.